The essence of the totalitarian state is the state alleges the absolute control over the person. That's whether they have stormtroopers or little old ladies with forms that they want filled out. So some people think it will never happen here. We don't have any military. Yeah, that's part of our problem. We don't have any military and we don't have stormtroopers and we have a democracy. Yeah, but you can vote in these geniuses with the gleam in their eye about this wonderful society when the state <clears throat> will tell you whether you have babies, they'll check you out for the right genes, and if you ever have a deformed fetus, you better get rid of it, etc., etc. But then the question arises, <clears throat> so totalitarianism, therefore, is this. You have planners who know ever so much more than you. Who are you? You little woman, you little girl, you're in love with that nice boy. You get married and you'll probably have a blockhead for a child because he's not too bright, your husband. You yourself have probably a diabetes gene or something like that. So the totalitarian state will allow you to have fun. Oh, if you want sex, have all you want. We'll just clean it up so you don't get VD or the other disease of pregnancy. So we're not going to stop you from having your fun. But Children are much too serious to be left to parents. That, that, that's the totalitarian ideal. So you people have this excellent satirist, uh, Huxley, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. It's a masterwork. Some people foolishly think Huxley is against the family. He is satirizing those who are against the family. I don't say you should let your adolescent read it. You should read it. And the great C.S. Lewis in his book, The Abolition of Man, he shows you what the control is a dreaming of. Now, their dreams have not yet come true. They're still, they don't have the power yet. But the more one centralizes education, health services, <clears throat> abortion referrals, money, power, the more their dreams can come true. So Bertrand Russell's point was this. He says that uh, it's soon going to become quite obsolete for men and women to marry and have a family. <clears throat> too much trouble, and, uh, the woman isn't fulfilled, <clears throat> and there are all kinds of other problems. But he said, but we still need babies. Obviously, if baby creation dies out, <clears throat> the controllers won't have anybody to control. They won't even be, you won't even need the government. You won't even need sociologists if there are no babies. So they've got to ensure a supply of babies. Now, God thought he had it ensured by the institution of marriage. And that's the way it's worked out most of the time. It's had its problems, but it's had its great joys. The utopians have, they want, a, Russell said, we need highly paid professional women who will agree to bear a child by artificial insemination, of course. I mean, or else maybe by some miracle they'll love the donor or they'll enjoy the donor, but that, we're going to separate sex from babies, <clears throat> which is what they're doing today with the pill and with abortion. So sex is for fun and, and deep commitment and all that, <clears throat> but when we need that next crop of babies so that we'll have somebody to pay taxes and somebody to run, well, we'll, we'll uh, Plato even had this, we'll get the best specimens of the women, you know, wide hips, intelligence, and maybe... Blue eyes, who knows, if we're eugenic experts, we'll take all kinds of blood samples to make sure we don't have uh, recessive genes anywhere. Then we'll get the best donors. You know, I'm mocking this, but it's happened already. I think you've heard of this society. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's a kooky idea, so I always think of England and America when I think of kooky ideas. Excuse me for doing that. But some kooky English-speaking country, so some genius formed this society of sperm banks. We'll get all the, the thinkers. See, if only Russell had left us a little of his uh, uh, seed. And we have all these sperm banks. And then what do you know uh, when we need a couple of hundred good sociologists or, or air traffic controllers or mathematicians? Well, by eugenic breeding, we'll get the babies. And uh, now... The minute you get a baby, that's kind of, uh, uh, as any mother knows, that's work. But once the surrogate mother, she gets her salary, one baby every two years, you put her on pasture for one year to build up her vitamins, uh, she'll get her salary. Then what happens? Well, the professionals take over. The day nursery without which no one can live. 
from, from ye, day one on, we'll have professional nurses, professional diaper changers, and of course professional teachers. Well, that's the kind of nonsense that is being pushed in social sciences, in philosophy, in literature, and a lot of people think, isn't it wonderful? I, can't, I hope I live long enough for this brave new world, and especially this could be this, uh, uh, because otherwise one, one faces this bleak prospect of a husband who might not be that good looking or bright, and, and diapers, and then sniveling noses, and no fulfillment. Oh, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. And in this brave new world, therefore, we'll get the citizens. But, dear friends, or I hope you see already how grotesque this is quite apart from this immorality of this irreverence of, of treating a human person as if he's some animal and that one gets it by artificial insemination, by breeding the best stock. That's already the ultimate horror is this irreverent uh, dethroning of the God-willed way of transmitting human life. But you also...